Good day. My name is Attorney Anthony Reeves, and this is your Q&A Social Security Disability Today. Let's get to your questions. Our first question has to deal with someone who's received SSI benefits, or let me correct, someone who's receiving disability now and they have been alleging that they had a disability back from when they were a child and so now their parents are trying to get disability benefits going back retroactive to that time period. So the question really is, is what do I need to do to get SSI for benefits for a condition I've had since birth when I'm having difficulty getting it? I've seen this happen a few times in situations where we're dealing with adults, meaning someone who is in their 20s or, something, or older who have been found recently disabled for a condition that they had well back when they were young, even more importantly, back when they were born. Here's the thing that you have to understand. If Social Security finds you disabled now, if you don't have a pending application that you can reopen, or excuse me, or a prior application that you can reopen with the possibility of getting that reopened going backwards, you're not going to be able to go all the way back to the date of your birth and get benefits all the way back then. So let's kind of try from another example. Let's say that uh, you have a disability that you've had since birth. You've tried to apply. Your parents tried a couple of times when you were younger to see if they could get you disability. You were denied. Then you became an adult, and Social Security determined that you were disabled and that your condition was one that, that you've had since birth. Well, I'm sorry, you can't go all the way back and say, well, wait a minute, you need to give me benefits for all those other applications going all the way back 18, 19 years because if you found me disabled today in my 20s for something that existed when I was a child, I should get benefits all the way back that long. It doesn't necessarily happen like that. So keep that in mind when you find yourself in a situation where you're trying to figure out what you can do to get benefits going back retroactive for a condition that's been determined that you've had since birth. Our second, our second question has to focus on continuing disability review for a person with a mental impairment, in this instance they're talking about schizophrenia, where the individual is no longer taking medications because the medications were problematic. They have a review coming up and the question is, is the fact that I'm no longer taking my medication for my mental health condition going to be negatively affecting my ability with regards to review? Again, I'm going to tell people, like I say all the time, it really just depends on your situation. Here's where people usually mess themselves up. When you selectively choose to take yourself off medication that's been prescribed to you, there's a nice way of, they call it, the failure to follow medical advice. So in this instance, if a doctor is telling you that they believe that your condition would improve or be stabilized if you continue to take your medication and you choose to stop it, that's probably not going to help your case out at, at all. What you need to do is that if you're having problems with the medication, meaning the side effects are problematic, um, you're having a hard time focusing, it's just too many problems, go to your doctor and tell them. Let them adjust your medication or even try you on something different. It is never a good thing when you take it upon yourself to take yourself off of medication because you have a problem with it. And even worse is that if it's a prolonged period of time, because there's going to be this impression that you know what, if your condition is that bad, you take your medication. So keep in mind, you're not a doctor. Let a doctor adjust your medications. Our third question has to deal with VA service-connected benefits. If you're a veteran and you get VA service-connected disability benefits and you're applying for Social Security, how will the two interact with each other? That's an awesome question, so let's talk about it. If you're getting supplemental or applying for supplemental security income, any assets you get from any source will reduce the amount of money that you receive. So it doesn't matter if it's a VA pension or service-connected benefits, you're going to lose money on your SSI if you're
you're getting money from another source because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. However, let's say that you work and you paid into the system and now you're getting what we call disability insurance benefits. What impact will the service-connected VA benefits have? None. Because there is no offset for, for service-connected disability benefits from the VA. So keep that in the back of your mind. So if you're drawing VA service-connected disability benefits, that money will not be offset off of your disability insurance benefits, meaning the money that you worked and you paid into the system. Our fifth question is to deal with individuals who have been receiving disability benefits and filing taxes. I will tell you this. The question was asked is that I'm receiving $600 a month in Social Security. I haven't filed taxes in five years because that's all I've been receiving is Social Security. Should I file taxes? Typically, the amount of... And let's pause for a second. Most people fail to realize if the money that you've gotten into Social Security that you're getting back for disability is money you've paid into anyway that's been taken out of your check. Your check. So the likelihood that you're going to have any taxes on it are slim to none. Typically, if you get to a certain dollar amount, there is a possibility. This is what I tell people all the time. Contact the two places that you need to find out, the IRS and the Social Security Administration, and they will let you know whether or not your, the amount of money you're receiving for Social Security is such a threshold that you should have to file taxes. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Start with those two agencies, and you'll never go wrong. <laughs> Final question. I have an individual who wants to know if they're receiving Social Security and during the time period they've been receiving Social Security, a workers' comp case that's been pending for a long period of time has been settled and they're going to get a lump sum. What happens now? Most people don't realize that there is a workers' comp offset, which means what they do is they look at the combination of your workers' comp and your Social Security and determine whether or not that is greater than 80% of your average current earnings. In other words, what they do, they take the lump sum settlement, they figure out how much you would get out of that month over your life. So in a question where you've got 20 years left on your life, you get $20,000. Well, they're assuming that's going to be $1,000 a year. They divide that by the number of weeks, which are basically number of, of how much money you would receive per month. They would add that with the amount of money you receive in Social Security. That's your combined Social Security and workers' comp. You've got that one pot of money over here. Then they look at your earnings from when you worked, and they take 80% of that. So let's say, for instance, in a month, you were making 2000 bucks a month, or excuse me, 1000 bucks a month. So that's $800. So what they look and they say, okay, now that you're receiving this workers' comp, or you've received this settlement, we take the two, the workers' comp and Social Security, based on the calculations we just provided, and if your combined Social Security and workers' comp is greater than your 80%, so in the example I gave you, your 80% was $800 a month. If the combined of how much you would be getting now is greater than $800 a month, whatever that dollar amount is, they're going to subtract from Social Security. So the reality is, is at this point, now that you have been determined to get a workers' comp settlement, I would strongly, if you're getting Social Security disability insurance benefits, to contact your local office, provide them copies of your Social Security and your, work, uh, your workers' comp settlement, so this way they can make a determination of how much of an offset it's going to be. And keep in mind, there may not be an offset at all, because if you don't have a big settlement, maybe you're younger because there's more periods of time, there's a lot of factors that come into play, so keep that in mind. Again, I want to thank you for joining me for another edition of Q&A, Social Security Disability Today. I hope this answered your questions. As always, keep the questions and comments coming, and as always, we will do the best we can to make sure we answer your questions. My name is Anthony Reed. You have a wonderful day.